what the lighting is going to be like. So do you matter? Do I matter? And who I am, does that have anything to do with my subscribers or how many views I get? Is that how I matter? Am I better than somebody else because I get more views or I have more subs? No. And don't you ever feel that way either. And don't you ever feel discouraged or feel that you're not good enough to start your own channel. Believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. to see you and thank you so much for coming back and seeing me and Desi. I hope you had a great holiday weekend and I am so glad you're here and I am so glad I'm here. I missed you so much. I've been kind of missing in action a little bit here but I know you guys understand. But today I am going to do a requested video. For the last couple years you have asked me to do a video on how to start a YouTube channel and uh, tips and tricks on if you have a channel, what, what, what are the kind of things that I would recommend so you could be successful. And I know so many of you out there want to start a channel and I want to help you do that. And if you have a channel, I want to do everything I can to uh, pass on some of the things that I have learned over the years. And I tell you, those first two years were... <laughs> They were traumatic. <laughs> I think we are kind of sold a package that one size fits all. In other words, a young girl in her 20s starting a channel, the advice they give her, that's not going to work for a woman over 50. And that's what I'm going to address today. A mature woman starting her channel or running her channel on YouTube. And what are some of the things that are going to make it successful? You know, I started my first channel in 2013 and I had it for six weeks. I got up to 73 subscribers. I had no idea why I wanted a channel. I just thought it was like throwing spaghetti on a wall and just see if it would just to see if it would stick. And I really just didn't have a direction. And after six weeks I got scared and I shut it all down and I just looked back and thought, I'll never do that again. And I hadn't thought it through. I didn't know what I wanted. I, I, I honestly hadn't picked a topic that I felt passionate enough about to really put my heart and soul into my conversations with you. So I just was kind of copying what other videos that I saw. You know, what's in my bag or how to put on eyeshadow and all these things, that, videos that I saw that I loved, but that wasn't me. That wasn't my story and YouTube is changing and it's changing really fast and so the videos that we loved four or five years ago it's been done when when you're starting a channel and your audience is over 50 over 60 you have one of the smartest sophisticated audiences that you can have on YouTube and everybody out there you know this is true. You have been there and you have done that. So it's more of, instead of a teaching tool, it's more of a sharing tool. The, now this is just my opinion, but this is how I approached my channel on YouTube the second time around. I realized that for me to have this even remotely successful, that 
I had to be in this 100% with my audience and it had to be something different. I had to love what I was saying. I had to believe in what I was saying and it had to be said in a different way. I could not, I could not be Tammy from Uppy Beats. I, I, I could not be Donna Shorts. I, I could not be all, all the YouTubers that I love to watch. I wasn't them. I wasn't even close to being hot and flashy. Although I was hot and, and I was flashy. But I had to make sure when I started my channel that it was me. And that I knew who I was. And I knew what I wanted to say. And I may not have known, you know, how to say it. But I knew what I wanted to say. And what I wanted more than anything was to reflect back to my audience a woman in her 60s because I didn't see it on TV, I didn't see it in the movies, and I didn't think you did either. So I thought I had something to offer. So I think that's the first thing is to focus. To focus to make sure that you are unique, make sure you know what you want to say, and say it in a way that is uniquely you and something different. If you want to do videos on YouTube, if you want to show people your hair or your face or your body or, or the world, you need a camera. You need to be able uh, for your audience to see you and what you're talking about. And when I started out, I didn't have enough money for a super nice camera. I, did, I couldn't buy a DSLR. They're about $500. You know, they start out at about $500 and I couldn't do that. But I bought the camera that I could afford. And the other thing I wanted to say is lighting. I couldn't, I have nice lighting now, but uh, a window <laughs> and an umbrella light but I don't have fancy lighting and, and but that's in the future but anyway I digress when I first started out I knew lighting was so important because the better your lighting the better your camera will work especially if you have a cheap camera <laughs> so what I did and my friend Mary from Glitzy Fritzy I will link her channel below she was a real pioneer in uh, doing camera and lighting on a budget and she helped me when I started out and she said get yourself a bunch of table lamps put in daylight bulbs have them shine on you uh, from all around and it will be illuminating and your camera will work better and she was right so that's what I would say is that you will never find a big successful channel on YouTube that doesn't use a super nice camera they just they don't exist I would like to say they do but they don't so get the camera you can afford and plan on upgrading when you can so the third thing I wanted to cover is editing and camera work and they are two different things and so when you're starting a channel are you thinking like oh my goodness I really don't know how to edit can I do a channel without editing yes you absolutely can do a channel without editing there are uh, a bunch of channels that I watch from time to time and they don't they don't do any editing but I would highly advise you to learn how to edit it you want a lot of energy you want your video to clip along and you know a lot of uh, long pauses and you know all that stuff especially in the beginning when you're not comfortable on camera you're gonna wanna try to edit out all the dead space so it is really nice to be able to you know cut and then put together just just to edit just to, just basic basic editing skills that's all you need just you don't need a fancy editor. You don't need all the bells and whistles. Um, something very simple. Just, you know, here's some footage over here. Here's some footage over there. And you just put them together and that is editing. And I have to say the camera work, that will come, that will come later. Camera angles, you know, taking your camera out in the field and getting a, a cool shot. Um, yeah, that all comes later. The next thing I wanted to talk about is some real tools to help us with our channels. And I'm sure you have all noticed that there is a cottage industry out there of uh, men who have YouTube channels with the sole purpose of telling 
us how to grow our YouTube channels, how to get more subs and how to get more views and do this and do that. And, <laughs> and it's like one size fits all, right? Doesn't matter if you're male, female, old, young, what your niche is, you know, just follow their advice. And a lot of their advice truly is good, but some of it I find, you know, I really do take issue with it. Uh, the one thing, this, this thumbnail thing, uh, I think to have the same thumbnail week after week after week, to have it, you know, like stamped uh, as a logo, I don't like that. If I see somebody has those kind of thumbnails, I won't watch their videos because I, I will feel like their videos are just packaged videos. I, I like the custom thumbnails that are very creative um, and, and I, I just love that and I try to strive for that and I rarely ever hit it but the videos that I that have done best for me are the videos that have thumbnails that are kind of bizarre with my big old face on them. You know, another thing that I don't subscribe to is those thumbnails where they want us to look surprised or have our mouth hanging open. I can't do that, you know. I I didn't reach this age so I could get into a line of work where I feel I would have to somehow compromise my dignity. I'm not going to do that for views. I'm never going to do that. Another thing they insist on is that we always ask the person to subscribe and click that button. And, you know, I have always thought that I, I, the audience, the YouTube audience, that they're like our family or our friends. And it's like, you know, somebody is sitting with me on the couch and we're having a good time. And all of a sudden I say, now you do have my phone number, right? I mean, I know you're here now, but you know, maybe you don't have my phone number. Do you have my address? I mean, I know, you know, you're sitting here and you know where I live, but maybe next week you won't know where I live. So do you have, my, I mean, you know what I'm saying? It just seems so strange that within 30 seconds of when the video starts, you're asking somebody to subscribe so they'll be notified of your future videos, but they haven't even seen one yet. These are just my thoughts. But you know, what is good is drawing the audience in, right? And who does that better than Wayne Goss? Wayne Goss is the master. It's not, you know, subscribe or click that bell or it's, it's, give me a like. He doesn't do that. He, he will say, well, maybe he does do that. <laughs> but what I think that Wayne Goss does the very best is he draws me in because gosh darn it, whenever I am watching his video, he gets me every time because he'll say, this is my opinion. And then he'll pour his heart out and then he'll say, what do you think? Tell me in the comments what you think. Tell me if you think I'm right or wrong. And he gets me every time. <laughs> And then I'm like typing a comment and, you know, I know he's probably not going to read those comments, but he, I love it. You know, it makes me feel like I'm part of his channel and that I'm part of all the other people that watch his channel and it's brilliant. He doesn't have to say, click that bell. He just draws me in just sheer wanting to be part of it. I think that's the key. I really do. You know, one thing that people really want to know about is money. And are they going to be able to make any money with their channel? And, you know, I don't think there there's any, you know, hard and fast rules here. I know that um, I've been on YouTube for three and a half years. In the last six months, I have never seen money um, like this that is pumped into YouTube right now. It, it's, it, it is just amazing. But as far as making money on YouTube. You have a lot of different avenues um, that you're going to make money from, but if you grow uh, like my channel did, uh, I'm not a, a large channel at all. <laughs> um, you know, I have a little over 13,000 subs at the moment. Each video of mine gets around 8,000 uh, views, but that's enough. That That is enough for me to make a humble living now. So, if your goal is to make a living on YouTube, you have to, um, well, you have to figure out a lot of things. How much money uh, do I need to live on? Because what I consider uh, a living may not be what you consider a living. Uh, another thing too is I was willing to give it two years before I made a dime. 
and I was willing to invest in YouTube uh, like I would any other business like a, if I started a shoe business or a hat business or so I set myself a timetable I said I am going to allow myself to invest in my YouTube channel when I can and I also am going to put a time limit on it because I, I am not going to be treading water for uh, 10 years. I, I gave it 24 months and I said to myself, if in 24 months I don't feel good about my channel, my subs, my views, and uh, some income that I am bringing in to help support me and Cooper or me and Desi, then I'm going to quit. And I'm going, that this just isn't, you know, my talent. I'm going to go somewhere else and try to be creative and expressive. But, you know, I, you know, I need to find something I love to do, but I also need to find a way that I can be compensated. So I gave myself two years and that was it. And after two years, things really changed. You know, about a year and a half ago, I upgraded my camera. And when I did that, I noticed that the business side of YouTube really kicked in. And I started to get a lot of offers to do sponsored videos. And that is another opportunity that you have uh, to make money on YouTube. I don't choose to do a lot of sponsored videos um, because they cramp my creative style. And so that is why I don't, there are a lot of products that I love and I, I'm i very proud to speak on behalf of them or showcase uh, their, the product. But uh, yeah, you know, I, I will do them occasionally because I like to eat, but uh, normally I don't like to do them because I just, I love to film on my terms the way that I want to film. So that's basically why I don't do sponsored videos. And when I do do a sponsored video, I make sure I love the product, that I'm passionate about the product, that I'm never given a script, and that it's never a dedicated video where I spend 10 minutes talking about an egg timer. I don't, I don't do that. Um, you know, I, I have found a way to do YouTube on my terms and that's the only way it's going to work for me. So getting back to making money, another way that you can make money on YouTube is you can have a Patreon page and that is just a page where the people that love and support you can throw in a few bucks in the in the hat every month so you don't have to take so many sponsored videos and you, you don't have to suffer uh, because Filming takes up so much time and it can be so expensive and in order to keep filming videos sometimes you have to take you know some sponsored jobs you don't really want not that you don't love the product it's just that it takes the time away from the video you really want to film so patreon is a really cool way uh, to support uh, the youtuber that you love um, I, my fellow content creators I love them so much and I don't, you know, I'm, I'm not on YouTube that much anymore because of my personal life right now. So I'm not watching a lot of uh, videos, but if they have a Patreon page, it's my way of supporting my fellow creators without actually, you know, um, having to physically be there for them. So that's another way that you, um, you will have revenue. You know, nine times out of ten when I see a channel that isn't doing well, I will watch a few of their videos and most often than not, the person doesn't have any joy. They're not happy with what they're doing and you can tell, you can feel it. And that just makes me not want to go back. So if I could say anything, it would be do YouTube on your terms and be joyous with what you're doing and love what you're doing. And if you don't love it, don't do it. Then, then your calling is something else. But if you do love it, you will never sit around and worry about money or if your fellow creators approve of you or not. You, you won't have those thoughts. When, when you start recording and when you connect with your audience, it's like no other feeling. 
And it's such an honor. It's such an honor to have a platform. So I guess in recapping, it would be all the advice you get, take it with a grain of salt when it comes to growing your channel. And focus. Know why you want a channel. And have joy about you. And share that joy with your audience. And engage your audience. And make videos for your audience and for yourself. And not your fellow content creators. Find something that you, you truly are passionate about. And tell that along with some slices of your life. Because that's at this age, that's what we care about sometimes life can be really tough and to see a woman reflected back to us that is going through the same tough circumstance that we are that's what our channels are about regardless of how many lipsticks we hold up this is important stuff that we're doing on our channels and and I think we can't follow a, a, a formula and I think as long as we say true to ourselves and we're open enough. We're, we're willing to share who we are with our audience. That's success. That's YouTube success. When every single week you get in front of that camera and you love it. That's, that's YouTube success for you and your audience. Desi, 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 come here. Hey everybody, thank you so much for spending this time with us today. I hope you have a wonderful brand new week and when you're done with your week, come back and see us, okay? Okay, it's a deal. terms and and make sure that you're you're making the videos you want to make believe in yourself